Alright guys, welcome to a brand new video series that I'm going to be doing on how to build a winning machine learning algorithm for the Forex market. Now if you don't know what the Forex market is, it's a financial currency exchange market and there's a lot of algorithmic traders out there that are attempting to to beat the market using a computer. Now in this video series I'm going to be detailing a strategy that I found and implemented my own version of that is highly successful and I'll go all the way through how to build a strategy and how to link it with a broker API so that we can actually do live practice trading. Alright so let's get into it. First I'm going to cover machine learning basics. Um, so the algorithm that we're primarily concerned with is a classification algorithm. This attempts to determine the class given features. So a class being like a label. So an example that I'll show here is can we determine whether somebody is a basketball player or not? So first we'll create some features and we'll train the algorithm. We'll classify the unseen data. So we'll, we'll give the algorithm new data that it has not seen and we'll, we'll try to see if the algorithm can determine whether or not the person is a basketball player. And then we'll determine if it was accurate or not. So here's the example. I put together this table of people here and some of them are basketball players and some of them aren't. As you can see here we got Ricky Rubio and Steph Curry. These are both NBA players um, and by looking at their, their these features here, so each column is going to be a feature. So what that means is we have one, two, three, four, five features that we're giving to the algorithm and then these are the samples here, the columns. So Ricky, Tiger, Seth, and Steven are the, sam are the samples. And this would be a binary classification here because we have ones and zeros. So one being it is a basketball player and zero being not a basketball player. And it really doesn't matter which one you decide to be zero or one. The algorithm does not care. Um, you could even, these could even be strings. It doesn't have to be binary, but I, I like binary because it's nice and, nice and clean and simple. So let's see if we can determine what this last sample here, if we can classify it. So just right away, a couple of things I'm going to point out is both the basketball players are under 30, and they also have a very high vertical, so 36.5 and 29. Tiger Woods can jump apparently, so this is a this is kind of an anomaly in the data and I just introduced this here so that people, you can get comfortable with data that isn't very clean because in the forex market it's just not going to be clean at all. Um, as you can see here the weight does not really contribute because we can't really distinguish between an, a basketball player and a non-basketball player based on the weight. So I'm just going to go ahead and say right here based off the age and the salary that this unknown person down here is a basketball player. So that's basically what a machine learning algorithm does for classification problems, is exactly that. Is we determine, yes, so we'll put a 1 here, this is a basketball player, and let's see the result. Yes, there it is. So this person is Kevin Love, a uh, super tall dude, super heavy. But So we can see that, that that was a pretty accurate classification. But we're doing it with a very small number of data, and I cheated because I already knew, because uh, I made this PowerPoint, obviously. All right, so some of the challenges in classification are to clean the data, um, determining features that matter. So some features just aren't going to contribute to our ability. So here, the weight did not contribute to our ability, so we would get rid of the weight because it didn't help. Um, and then we would drop columns and rows that have missing data. For algorithm efficiency, we would want to normalize the data somehow. So that means bringing all the data within the same scale so that the algorithm uh, it's just easier on it. It doesn't have to think as much, basically. Um, and then we can do some dimensionality reduction. I'll talk about this later. It basically ties into um, just reducing the, the amount of features or the, 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 the dimensional space of what we're, what we're working with. Okay, so here's some here's some very common ways that we normalize the data. The first one is min-max scaling. Uh, you can look into this, basically normalize each column by the min and the max. The other way that we do it is standardizing the data. So this brings all of the data in each column to have the same 
well, they all have the same mean, obviously, but they'll all have the same standard deviation of one and a mean of zero after we stand after we standardize. So here is a min-max scaling of the same example. So this brings each column into the same range uh, between zero and one. So this will make it easier to classify, uh, may, maybe not to the eye as a human, but to the computer it makes it much more easier. Uh, here is a Oh, this, I forgot, this is, shouldn't say min-max scaling, this should say standardization up here. But this is a standardization uh, by, the, the, by the mean and the standard deviation. So th this will make each column have a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1, which also makes it easier for the algorithm. Alright, so this is a basic algorithm structure for classification. First step is we're going to get some data, and then we're going to clean it up, normalize it down, uh, just like I discussed. And then we'll train the model. So we'll create labels, so like ones and zeros for the training set. And then we'll train the model so that it can make future predictions. And then we'll check the accuracy of it using uh, like a test sample. So we'll feed it a test sample and we'll see if it gets the predictions right. Um, and then based on that, we'll remove redundant features and we'll do dimensionality reduction. And then we will retrain the model. We'll check the accuracy again, hopefully it's higher, and then we'll make predictions. And then we'll profit, because that's the goal, we want to make some money, right? And then we'll repeat again and again and again. So so let's talk about 4x now. So the, the strategy that I'm going to be detailing in this series is a binary classification strategy. Now it's not necessarily binary because we want to know if it will go up or down but I also put a zero in there for if it, we're not sure if it's going to go either way. So it's, I don't know what to call that, maybe trinary, but it's a classification problem. For, I'm just going to refer to it as a binary classification problem, even though it's not technically binary. So let's move on. So the first thing we want to do when designing a strategy is, is what features do we use? So a very, very simple uh, classification algorithm that I've tested is just using the price as a feature or maybe the return over the last period of time. So if we did that, say we come here, we say, oh, what's the price? And then the algorithm says, oh, well, based on the price here, I think it's going to go up. So it enters a position here, and boom, oh, we, we made profit, but that was just lucky because price is not a good predictor at all. So um, here are some features that we could use. So we could use financial signals. One. Uh, one is the accumulation distribution oscillator. So here's an example of that right here. As we can see at this crossover point, uh, corresponds to like right in here, uh, it crosses the moving average, so we may want to uh, enter here. So we could give uh, this feature to the algorithm and see if this helps our prediction accuracy. Or we could use something more mathematical, like a signal analysis feature, maybe a Fourier series expansion fit, or linear regression fit, polynomial fits, and there's other, there's just a huge range of mathematical functions that we could use as features for a uh, classification algorithm. So next thing I'm going to talk about is rolling versus static algorithm training. So in a rolling algorithm, basically what we would do is we would train the model, or we would simulate trading by retraining the model every certain amount of time. So Basically, this would keep the algorithm adapted to the current market conditions because we're not just going to train it once and let the market or let the algorithm just run and run and run. We're going to retrain every so often so that it knows kind of what it can kind of feel the market. Uh, the drawback of this is very computationally expensive depending on how often you retrain your classifier. Uh, the other option is a static algorithm. This is where we only train once. Uh, I really don't like these algorithms, but it has the pro of being computationally inexpensive. Uh, the problem with it is it does not adapt to changes in the market. It's, it is susceptible to overfitting because you only let it train over one period of time. So, you know, that's, uh, we're going to go with the rolling setup here, and we'll detail that later. So, the different types of classifiers that we could use. So there's such things as a support vector machine, there's the K uh, nearest neighbors, there's decision trees, which, which is also very similar to the random forest, 
and then there's the naive Bayes uh, of classifier method. Now you can find out more about all these on Google and through like scikit-learn documentation. I'm not going to talk about all of them. We will be using a support vector machine for this strategy. Now if you're not familiar with machine learning, I highly recommend you to read this book right here. Uh, this is probably my favorite book that I've, one of my favorite books I've ever read. It's really simple, easy to read. Um, uh, I think it's, I think you can pick it up on Amazon for like 50 bucks, 60 bucks, maybe less. So if you want to learn more about mach machine learning in Python, pick this book up. It's an excellent resource. Um, another resource is a scikit-learn documentation. And then there's this guy on YouTube, uh, I forget his actual name, but he does Centdex, and he has a machine learning series for Forex. Um, this is one of the series that I first watch on YouTube. Uh, here he is right here if you just type in Centdex. This guy is awesome. You want to go down here and go to playlists. And let's see. Right here. This is the one you want under data analysis. Machine Learning for Forex and Stock Analysis Algorithm Trading. So go down here if you want. Check this guy out. Awesome, awesome tutorial series. 19 videos, but if you stick with it, you'll learn a lot in coding and basics of like machine learning with Python. We're going to be detailing a completely different strategy design, but I just wanted to give him a shout out because it's an awesome, awesome series. Um, the last resource is just Google, man clearly. So let's talk about the algorithm architecture. So we're going to basically make a classification algorithm and I'm basing this algorithm off of a research paper that I found online. So I don't want anyone to think that uh, I'm like God and I figured out this algorithm all by myself. I didn't. I found it in the public domain and it's a research paper that I found called Forex Daily Trend Prediction Using Machine Learning Algorithms. It's written by Arij Bashar, Mohammed Walid Fakhr at the Arab Academy for Technology, Science, and Maritime Transport. Here is a quick overview of that research paper. I'll link this in the description. Read this before you continue. This is excellent. And primarily, we're going to be focusing on these two tables here in the, uh, in the paper. So those two tables are right here. These are the primary takeaways and these are the features. So we're not going to be using this exact same setup that they did but uh, we're going to be using most of these features. So as you can see here if you count up all the features, we're looking in the number of features column, they go all the way up to 81 features. Okay, So that's a huge, huge amount of features. For an example uh, in my example with the basketball player, we only use like four or five features. So Forex is much harder to predict, especially, uh, you know, just how volatile the market is. So using 81 features, we're hoping to s capture somewhere in there a very good uh, feature to, or set of features to predict the market. And so some of the ones I already highlighted uh, the four-year series or the sign series expansion fit um, and then this uh, where is it uh, ADOSC this is the accumulation distribution oscillator and so for each one of these features we're gonna be we're gonna be populating a data frame uh, for each one of these periods so for the for the ADOS we're gonna be doing periods one two three four and five now in their example they do days but in our algorithm, we're going to be using hours because I found that to be uh, more, more profitable. Okay, so that is going to conclude the, the introduction. Uh, stick around, you guys. This is going to be an excellent series. And by the end of it, you'll know just how to make a classification algorithm that is highly profitable.